So we're live again, yeah. uh, and uh, now we're uh, switching languages to English because we Apologies. have a guest <laughs> <laughs> with us. Uh, do you want to present yourself and talk a little about what yourself and what you're, who you are and yeah. what you're doing? Hello folks, uh, my name is Dave Mervik and I'm the narrative designer at Sasha Studios. So I'm going to be talking to you in English, I'm sorry, about uh, Little Nightmares, our new game. Yeah. And we also have Tove Bengtsson. Yeah, hey. we have. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sugar mix. Do you feel left out? No, <laughs> I can understand it. I would just yeah. sound like a child if I try and talk Swedish to you. So it that would work. be funny, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Och vi kommer få se lite mer av dig imorgon också, ja. eh, då du kommer gästa inte kanske som eh, Bandai Namco-representant utan från Nördigt. Tillsammans med Mats Det är din mic, hålla den. Have you pressed the, the forbidden button? <gasps> <gasps> Ska jag repetera kanske vad jag sa? Hörs det bra nu? Ja, oh, säg ja, 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 igen. Ja, bra. <laughs> Jag heter Tove Bengtsson och <laughs> jobbar på Bandai Namco som ger ut lite Nightmares. Mm. Ja. Välkomna. Tack. Welcome. Thank We're very, very happy to have you guys here. Yeah, we're really excited. Yeah, cool. So, especially me, because <laughs> I will be playing Little Nightmares today. Um, so, uh, do you want to tell us something about the game before we get started? Or uh, we? Yeah, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, uh, it's a game that we, well, we wanted to make for a long time. Um, it started, I think, about three years ago when we uh, we decided we wanted to make our own games again, and uh, we applied for money from um, Nordic Game and uh, Creative Europe, and. Uh, both of them gave us some, which was really cool. <laughs> so uh, it let us make a prototype, and uh, and that led to meeting these guys, and uh, and then that led to this huge screen showing our, our game. Yeah, now. it's really huge. Yeah. The viewers can't see, but uh, it's actually really, really huge. Have you played it on uh, this? I haven't. <laughs> no, it's system. freaking me out a little. Bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, you you. Uh, but for guys, people who are not uh, very familiar with Tarsier Studios, you have been working a lot on the Little Big Plant franchise earlier, haven't you? Yeah, we have. We, uh, I think it was for about ten years, uh, way before even I joined. I've been there yeah. for about six years now. Um, they were making costumes and stuff for Little Big Planet One. I think worked on Ragdoll Kung Fu, Fist of Plastic as well before yeah. that. Uh, is that made by Tertiary Studios? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I play that game a lot. Really? Well, you're going to make everyone very happy back there because they still like to play Capture the Fish. Yeah. <laughs> when we're having a it was the <laughs> one of these games that was very early uh, digital download on uh, PlayStation Network. Yeah. And at uh, that time, there weren't uh, that many indie games on PlayStation Network. No. So we th that was one of the few. And me and my girlfriend played that a lot. Oh, nice. And no one <laughs> not that many people played uh Ragdoll Kung Fu, not much anyway. You'll have to come over on a Friday and we'll have some beers. And yeah, it's a beer. very, very funny game. So, yeah, great. Because I didn't know you, you guys. Yeah, we get everywhere, you see, you don't know <laughs> yeah. when you've played one of our <laughs> games. But yeah, we did, and we did yeah. LBP Vita, we did, that was our own uh, take on, on LBP. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but no, yeah. now we're making our own stuff. So what I've seen from Little Night Nightmares, there's a slight shift of tone from... Uh, Tiny, sh yeah, <laughs> tiny shift. shift of tone from a little bit planet franchise <laughs> and this yeah. one. Yeah. So yeah. should we b get yeah. started maybe so we can check it out? What is 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 this some kind of lighthouse or something like that? There's always Ooh. a lighthouse. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know, do we? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Wha wha what is your role at uh, Tarshay Games? Uh, what do you do? Narrative designer, so uh, I kind of work with story and characters and stuff across all of our projects. And I also get to do stuff like this because I kind of like talking to people, which I guess is kind of weird for the games industry. Most people just like to sit there <laughs> and make games and stuff. But I kind of enjoy it. <laughs> A lot of them. <laughs> Okay, so you work with story, but yeah. what's your background? Have you um, been a writer? No, we were talking about this outside. Mm. I'm too much of a coward to actually ever send anyone stuff that I've written myself. Um, I think now I'm, I'm doing stuff with my wife at home, so uh, maybe she'll make me actually Oop. send it off. 
But uh, no, I, I did a English degree in creative writing and all this and had no plans uh, and came out obviously with no, jo no job. So uh, I worked in QA uh, at Warthog in Manchester for about three and a half years. And then moved on to work on the Lego games with Traveller's Tales and CT Fusion. And then that's where I got my first chance to actually write some stuff for Lego Rock. I love the Lego games. I mean, I love... And I love the story in the Lego games. Do you games. remember my stuff from Lego Rock Band? No. no. <laughs> there, there it is again, you see. We get ah. everywhere. <laughs> but no, it was actually Tarsha that gave me my chance to actually write properly for uh, for my job, which was oh. really cool. And, and, you and here you play the, the character with the yellow raincoat. Uh, yes. She's called this oh. is six no. and you nearly <laughs> broke her knees. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm yeah. just testing her out. This is this <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you do? You just like see how, I'm a how horrible person, much people I'm can sorry. take. Actually I did the same when I really? when, What's when I tried wrong to demo. I, I don't know. She just wanna know <laughs> how far you can jump. But can I kill you? She's a girl though. Uh, because yes, you can't I can anything. tell you that. Yeah, well that's kind of the point of her, really. You know, we want to keep her feeling kind of <laughs> ambiguous, and uh, you know, oh. it's all right. You can jump on the bed. You can you can jump on the bed. It's really nice. No, I spend a lot of time doing that. <laughs> can I jump on from here? But yeah, I mean, uh, throughout the game, really, yeah, what you're going to be can. doing is seeing if you can figure out what she's all about and why she's there and, and what there even is. Yeah, wh where um, is there? There, where are we? Uh, we can't the more. The more. What's yes, the more? Exactly. Yeah. Well, okay. it's it's uh, mysterious. This place. is the other part of of what you're going to be trying to discover as you go through is like, what's the more all about? Why you know? Why are you there? And why are other people there? And yeah, mm. it's um, it. One thing I should tell you, which is it's kind of a shame for me because I I love writing dialogue and there's none in this whatsoever. Oh. Yeah. Bad decision. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually a great decision. Um, and one we took very early on, as uh, we wanted to tell a story without words and like have people kind of interpret what they think's going on. So it means you have to look at everything really, really closely, and and all the details are there for a purpose. It's not just to look cool, even though it also looks cool. So we get both. Yeah. But, but who yeah. are your target audience? Do you have a specific uh, kind of audience that you want to reach? Yeah, well, kind of like big kids, really, like adults who remember being a child. And um, yeah. it's not really um, your classic kids game. So we're not saying, you know, get your five, six year old to play it. I think in different parts of the world, it may be tw 12 and above or 16 and above. So, it, yeah. you know, it does deal with dark themes and stuff. but. You it know. is called Little Nightmares. Yeah, but just little ones. Yeah. But I, you know, I used to sneak, sneak uh, a watch at things like Jaws when I was a kid. Yeah, me. It didn't affect me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so. No, but uh, this game, I just uh, have to say, it's like for me, this reminds me of like, it's like a mix between Yarny uh, Unravel yeah, right. and uh, Clock Tower. <laughs> the oh, like there's going to be some people back at the office. Will be very happy. Clock Tower is one, uh, and we d we didn't look at Unravel obviously because we it, 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 we don't, I don't think we knew about it at the time. Um, Clock Tower is one though, is, is one that we used to talk about a lot when we were talking about the kind of game that we wanted to make, and, and it's, the, it's these old. Oh, and maybe I shouldn't talk through this bit. Stay away, me. Oh, which character How he just is carelessly this? throws that sausage in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, whatever. The look on Throw his face. Meat in. It's really it, obsessed. Meat yeah. in video game always looks so gross. Yeah. <gasps> no, I'm so close. He seems pretty tired of his job, that guy. Oh. So. Doesn't seem to enjoy himself that much. He yeah, uh, you know, and people keep sneaking in. and. He's so doughy. Like a big. I've never heard that description. But he, <laughs> is, he is, he is doughy. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's uh, I love the texture of the chef, though. I think it's just, uh, it's amazing. But her look, she kind of stands out, you know, with her yellow raincoat, and uh, you can see all those uh, like grey kind of. Mm. They look like me, but you know, w what uh, can you tell us about something about her look? Yeah, it Pella really likes to have things designed from simple. He's our, our art director. Um, <laughs> constructing, 
constructed out of very simple shapes, you know, and she's very iconic when you look at her from a distance, you just see, you recognise her straight away, and, and the, the yellow raincoat, you know, is also part of that. It's You kind of want to know where your character is at all times, so practically speaking, that's, that's, that's an element that fed into it, but also, you know, when you are telling a story without words, is you need to get things like she doesn't belong there. Yeah. She she is out of place amongst. Get the green bag. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen no. to me, man. Don't no. be playing the game. No. <laughs> ah, well, no. See what happens now when screaming. you don't when I you cannot. interrupt oh, my God. story. Did he? Oh, you called me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I no. <laughs> I can't speak and play at the same time. No, Maybe we, I should just we should we probably yeah, we probably shouldn't. Um, <laughs> no, I should. You should. You should. Should I just say run, <laughs> run? <laughs> oh no! Where am I? So you were saying oh. about her raincoat. Yeah, yeah. It's, like yeah, it's, so, it's so that you get that straight away. You get you get that sh you know she's out of place and she's not she doesn't belong in the in the more because she's so stark and you know simple shapes compared to the the organic dough man the <laughs> yeah oh look at that face yeah. though. and his mouth yeah i i have actually seen people with mouths like that yeah it's weird because i think of the chef now and i'm like oh, you, you can't be trusted <laughs> <laughs> which isn't fair you shouldn't be mouthist <laughs> no. oh, 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 oh. but do do you have any specific like inspirations or like fairy tales or stuff like that? Um, yeah, I mean, th there's so many. Uh, that's the problem, and I think it's it, it's a shame to like <gasps> to say anything to you when you're trying to get through this yeah. bit. Should we just sit here in awkward silence while you get through the kitchen? Um, Maybe. I guess, <laughs> um, yeah, th but th th there's, there are there's loads like the old folk tales, at least story story wise when you you think about like the older kid stories that didn't always have very pleasant no. endings or or middles or beginnings yeah many of the <laughs> many of the fairy tales that people know about like uh, are known from disney movies and stuff like that but yeah. there are original versions of them like yeah the they were grimy yeah. the <laughs> anderson uh, stories or uh, the brothers scream mm. uh, the stories they wrote down the folk tales they are very very dark yeah very very often grotesque and uh, have <laughs> Exactly, Very bad endings and yeah. stuff like that. Because, and grotesque is it as well. It's yeah. not. It, it's not like violent in the, or gory in the way that you see a lot of horror game. You know, no. your classic horror games nowadays. Because they're more like uh, what you call it. Uh, you know, cautionary tales in that way. That yeah. That kind, like Hansel and Gretel, that story. Yeah, yeah well like the witch's house. Yeah, and the witch is yeah, yeah, yeah. gonna cook them in the oven and eat them yeah. and stuff like that. And that's not really for kids as we see it today but mm. that's why kids were better behaved back yeah. then because they, they were told those <laughs> stories instead yeah, of they frozen they were afraid yeah they, they were, were afraid frozen <laughs> is to blame for everything <laughs> better people all around because they were scared of everything yeah so yeah they totally. do anything it's stupid. just stand still <laughs> you know the one with the with the um, did you get caught again while i wasn't looking yeah yeah i did <laughs> so what happens when when she got caught because we only saw his back does he eat her well, that's the questions we want you to ask yourself, really. Again, this 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 is part of it is like not showing all that because it, there's no need. It, your imagination does that job for you yeah. way better than anyone could could show. So, it's I ju we just think it's nice to just like leave things up to your imagination and your interpretation and stuff. But but the setting, you know, but because I feel like like we're on a boat or something, but it kind of looks like rock. But you were. Yeah. It's a it's a vessel. Yeah, it's, it's a vessel. It's, it's okay. not like uh, scanned lines or anything, you know. This lovely <laughs> party boat. It's <laughs> it's just like a long. Uh, I don't know what you would call it. Just a a, a tall U boat? vessel. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an an I boat, <laughs> <Yeah>. I think. <laughs> but is it submerged in water or? It yeah, it is. It's uh, it's in the water, so you just Ugh. see the the tip yeah. of the of the moor. Gross, he coughed in That's the kitchen. why you just see a very slight <laughs> kind of <laughs> rocking in the, in the screen. Mm. The gameplay is mostly stealth based with like physics based puzzles, or does it no, shift it, it, to it different yeah, kinds? Yeah, it, 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 it's mixed between things like we call it hide and sneak rather than stealth because you expect yeah. some fissure when you, you hear stealth, yeah. like I do. <laughs> um, 
but uh, it's that and it's like puzzle solving it's kind of like platforming and, yeah. and exploration as well we, that's another thing that we used to talk about a lot when you know like with Clock Tower also games like Another World yeah. and Heart of Darkness flashback where you just yeah. dropped in the middle of somewhere and you have to figure out yeah. what it is what this place is and what's going on and stuff it's nice to feel trusted as a player I think and you don't get that that much nowadays yeah, it's more so. like not that hand holding and more exploratory. Yeah, it drives me crazy all that. Oh, go on, J go up, go up there. Sorry, quickly, <laughs> <laughs> quickly. I have to get through this part. <laughs> and that's pretty interesting. Like a hint. no, 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 no. You're like all right. You're all right. <laughs> 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 Some kind of hint system. You, know, you see these little uh, <gasps> trolls or what My they're God. little guys with with can the hats. Yeah, the gnomes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they show <laughs> where you can go and what you can do at this place. Yeah, it's a bit more subtle. I would yeah. think. You know, just tiny little signposting like that. Which might still escape some people, but maybe it hits your, you know, your subconscious. But I much prefer that than you spend 10 seconds in a room and then a character says, "Hmm, maybe if you stepped on that tile and yeah. turned." Like, yeah, yeah, the thanks, worst. Th thanks. But the worst thing is when you, you know, we play a game and it just stops yeah. and it freezes and it pops up with text. Yeah. Uh, uh, square it's not with text. gaming anymore, yeah. though, and is it? And it tells you, you, you can do this and this. Yeah. That's Why are you telling me that right yeah. now? Is it mm -hmm. pertinent? Jag vill bara påminna om att eh, vi har en tävling som håller på att rulla eh, som är vilket är bästa plagget för äventyr och varför. Skicka in er motivation till tävling att spelhjälpen.nu och då kan ni vinna Dark Souls t-shirts och Little, Ma Little Nightmares huvudtröjor som vi har fått av Bandai Namco. Och det vill vi ha, såklart. Det vill vi vill ha tävlingsbidrag, vi vill att ni ska ha tröjor. Det är nice. De är gula och jättefina. Mm. Well, I was uh, thinking about you for some years ago you had a game that you're thinking about me some years ago <laughs> we only met today that's quite amazing <laughs> yeah but you had you had uh, what was it called city of metronome yes game that, that was, was uh, cancelled uh, it, it was never really uh, begun you know what i mean so it wasn't cancelled in that way it oh. was the, the um it when tasha was a, a bunch of students i think it was 10 12 years ago uh, they took this this concept metronome to uh, to E3, and uh, everyone loved it, uh, myself included. Um, but it just timing was off for a variety of reasons, and so um, it was <laughs> mothballed. <laughs> I would say no, it wasn't. I just wanted to use that term for the people <laughs> back home. Um, no, it was just it just wasn't happening. Uh, and then the the relationship with uh, Sony and Media Molecule began. So for the next ten years, it was just really kind of getting experience and stuff. But uh, you never really kind of lose that that passion to make the game that kind of game, you know. Um, is so there anything, anything from that game that has like? I think the flavor. There's a flavor there. That there's a definite um, DNA with like the art style and stuff, and obviously a child protagonist as well, um, which Metronome had. But um, this doesn't have uh, using sound as your weapon, um, and that's a great segue actually because this is a game where we didn't want weapons at all. We didn't. Uh, we wanted her to feel very vulnerable. You're doing very well at this puzzle, by the way. I did. Yeah. Didn't I? Mm. <laughs> but one. Yeah. But I feel like uh, the experience you guys have with the Little Big Planet series trans translates mm -hmm. into all these physics-based uh, puzzles and stuff like that. The entire uh, yeah. large part of uh, Little Big Planet is all these physics in the game, and everything has yeah. weight and texture and stuff like that. Mm. So and, al and also the puzzles and the depth of the image. Yeah. Yeah. You can't. You can't really. Uh, it would be stupid to to just. Ignore all that we learn working yeah. with uh, with Little Big Planet. We've not set out to go. Let's make Little Big Planet with 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 darkness. No, no, no. But it it, it's just that you, when you decide you're going to make like physics based. Yeah. Um, Everything seems to have a weight to it. And yeah, uh, exactly. And that's what I think MM physical. do so well is like making things feel nice really? and feel yeah. really tactile. <laughs> it's just horrible. Yeah, yeah. you made it <laughs> in the best way. Um, but yeah, so mm -hmm. it's so like that kind of yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, come on, you did all the hard <laughs> brain work there. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't want to swing on a string of sausages? <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Yeah, so I, th I think that the DNA of like what metronome would have yeah. you know been in in our heads, coupled with all this Woo! new stuff we've learned over the years, I think is you can't see a lot of that in, in here. But what the, what does this uh, meat theme 
<laughs> it comes from. But that's pretty fascinating. People just like me. Just, just you know, deal with it. <laughs> yeah, because no, uh, no the, 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 there's something. Uh, it's like that word just used before. Did I just hit my mic? Um, it's the grotesquerie of of meat. Yeah. There's something yeah. that's just everyone's really kind of familiar with it, and when you just yeah. you have it present, there's something about that. Just seeing it, uh, you start to wonder in where it came from. And these are shoes, are they? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I just have to say this part. Uh, it, it, this sounds awful. But uh, this reminds me of uh, when I was 15. I went to. Yeah, well, I'm going to. Yeah, I'll talk oh exactly right. the same thing as you. Yeah, and uh, that's really. Oh. I did kind of good. playing at the end. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, it, it, it's. I've heard lots of different interpretations of, of that final room, and um, it is that's it is a very very powerful image, and it, it asks you questions. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, it, it like. Like you've been there, and so you, you you bring your own kind of stuff to it, and yeah. wondering where it. Where, I and I, I don't want to minimise what you've just said, but I think of it like a a bolhov. Yeah. yeah. I, but that's where my mind goes, you know, because I'm just like a, an idiot child, <laughs> and so I'm like that. Ooh, I want to get in there. Yeah. I want to run through it. And I also thought of Star Wars, you know, when that the the, the shoe monster, yeah. <laughs> yeah. whatever you yeah. call them, but comes to you. But this whole game, like or. That I'm aware of. It feels like it's the mix between the ch childish fairy tale stuff mm. and the really like when you get that kind of interpretation, like it, it's very grown up mm. stuff too. You know, how do you, yeah, how have you uh, balanced that kind of mix of childish and uh, dark, the dark theme? I, th I, th I think, sorry. No, but I think uh, it's just. Um, you go with feeling, I think. I know that doesn't sound like a great answer, but you, you kind of know what you want to achieve. Like you don't want to just make something very twee and like Disney, but you also don't want to just go full on, just everything's bleak and miserable and stuff. So when, you, when you're putting things in, when you're constructing these scenes, you're thinking, are we going too far one way or the other? Are we achieving the balance that, you know, that we have this vision we have for the game is a balance between light and dark, you know, the, this, that chi it's like a, a dark reflection on childhood in that way, you know, yeah. where you're looking back and there are those things are very kind of present. So you, you, it is constantly like a, a balancing act, really. So I, I guess it is just on feel. Yeah. I would say. When yeah. I've been reading about uh, reading up articles and stuff like that on about Little Nightmares, the term that many many different uh, pub, um, media outlets and stuff mm. have used is that it's a Tim Burton esque uh, art style, and I don't. When I see this, I don't f get that feeling at no, all. No, neither do I. Because it seems <laughs> so so easy for many people to just yeah. yeah. If it's dark and if it's have a, have some kind of fairy tale vibe, Tim Burton. or so yeah, then it's Tim Burton. But <laughs> yeah. th but the whole theme with the the grotesqueness and the meat and all the mm -hmm. heavy, it feels it, that place, w both with the shoes, and with the like, there's something very off-putting and uh, disgusting about raw meat in very dirty <laughs> environments <Yeah. laughs> that feels <laughs> very, very bad. Yeah. yeah, it feels uh, <laughs> like this air of sickness yeah. over the whole thing. Mm. And I don't get that at all from like Tim Burton movies. That's very glossy and uh, uh, happy-go-lucky darkness goth That's just stuff. sweet yeah. weird. Yeah. This is yeah. More and this is more, this is I felt this like more disper disturbing or mm. more like like a yeah like a vibe of some s sickness and dirt mm -hmm. over the whole thing and that's pretty unique art style or pretty unique vibe in the whole thing i feel like yeah uh, um i'm i'm really glad to hear you say that though because i thought i was going crazy because i just <laughs> didn't see i c i can understand w why people see it but, but i don't see it yeah. in the same way because I, I i see that when i think of tim burton i think of curly trees <laughs> <laughs> just because I've seen Sleepy Hollow so much but um, yeah there is there's, there's kind of like a, a surrealist fairy tale vibe to his stuff certainly like in the early stuff like Edward Scissorhands yeah. as well and Beetlejuice but um, yeah I, I, I don't see it I, I, I see other things in there and maybe maybe it's nice maybe you know you don't want to just remake someone else's work. You don't want to just go like let's let's channel Tim Burton. He does that yeah. very well. He's good at being yeah. Tim Burton. 
Yeah. And you're so much better off using your own influences and expressing yeah. yourself and like yeah. and showing people what but you're all about. Maybe it's the easy explanation is that people tend to see things from their viewpoint with the references they already have. So it, it's yeah, very exactly. very easy yeah, to yeah. No, uh, so it's easier to categorize. But yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. I understand, and it's also a very flattering comparison. I mean, you know, yeah. he, he does what he does really well. So it, anyone says anything like that, it's kind of nice, but also we're like, yeah, well, thanks, but I, I don't, I don't see it. But yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's, yeah it's, it's it's a weird one. What about Jean? Uh, is it Jean Pierre Jeanette's? Yeah, like uh, City of Lost Children. Yeah, because when I saw this first time, I thought about that. Like uh, delicatessen and yeah. stuff, yeah. The delic delicatessen, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah I think a bit that's more the dark city there. and uh, city of lost children. I mm -hmm. think so. But yeah, I mean, and I know for a fact that there's people at the studio that love love Journey and Caro's stuff. Yeah. Um, but again, we're not trying to just make their stuff. But when you see, you know, like you say, you want to put meat in there and kind of really kind of emphasize this the grotesquerie of yeah. of its presence there. You look at you, you just kind of bring up a lot of what. Who's done that well? Who's worked with meat well <laughs> in that <laughs> case? And you know, and so maybe it comes out a little bit kind of uh, un yeah. unconsciously. But so, did yeah. were you in charge of uh, like creating the characters? Uh, it, it, I wouldn't say I was in charge of it. There, there was um, there's a number of people who were kind of part of that. You know, at the beginning, I, I was there from the beginning at the you know the concept phase where we were talking about the kind of characters we could have here. Um, the kind of world it was, and the you know, the story we wanted to tell. But um, no, no, there's there's other there's other mm. people involved as well. So it, it is always a discussion. Um, I'm not there on the day to day now because, the, like I say, there's there's not so much for me to do at this point. I think early on, it's it's about world world building and, and character, mm. you know, concepting and stuff. But then there's there's people who who kind of tell this story now uh, on a day to day basis. Mm. Jag skulle bara vilja påminna om att klockan åtta så har vi tre auktioner som går ut och det är um, Dragon Ball figuren, en stor staty som vi har fått av Bandai och Dark Souls 3 paket och Witcher 3 artbook. Så håll koll på att tradera för det är, vad är det, en timme och 20 minuter kvar på dem. Så det är efter mm. det, när det här segmentet är slut så är det tre auktioner till. Frågan är, vi har ju fortfarande lite tid kvar om jag ska starta om, om det kanske har kommit in någon som inte har sett. Det är lite roligare att titta på än en svart. Ja, ja. men kör en, ja. kör en vända till. Vi kör en vända. Vi kan springa runt och försöka testa lite olika grejer i köket. You're going back in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why is she wearing a raincoat? It's if the, this thing that she lives in is underwater, it seems pretty... Under. Yeah, you, 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 it's better to have a, a little yellow raincoat and not yeah. need it than yeah. to need one and not have it. Yeah. That's that's a good point. <laughs> Who would want him? Like, on. Uh, yeah. On what? what? <laughs> 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 oh my god! Oh, maybe I'm. Is that two different uh, pictures of him? One when he's sad and one when he's happy. <laughs> <or> <laughs> yeah. Is that uh, one picture How that someone have split in two? Yes. Me. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, oh, oh. you <laughs> killing <laughs> small children again? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even see that one. You tried to sneak no, it in while we were like looking. No, I was trying to jump to a thing that didn't <laughs> even yeah, exist. Yeah. <laughs> Jag vill bara påminna om att statskampen i Overwatch har börjat. Uh, den pågår mellan 18 och 22. Och det är alltså att Stockholm och Malmö mm. kämpar mot varandra i vem som kan donera mest pengar. Uh, ni hittar reglerna för det på, uh, på vår hemsidas blogg. Uh, gå in på spelhjälpen.nu så ser ni uh, och kolla på uh, inlägget om Overwatch borde det vara. Så det, det är igång nu. Så nu ska få ni som bor i Stockholm, ni som bor i Malmö, se till att representera er städer. Så so what's the, the gnomes? What's their purpose in the, in the story? Or I in the world? Well, they're just, they're kind of just in indigent, really. They're, they're, they're there. Um, they're probably Are they friendly? Well, they're probably as close to a friend as you'll have there, I think. Uh, sometimes they're, they're kind of interested in you. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're playful. There's, I kind of like that about them, though. 
I, we've just got a cat and that's what our cat's like. I think he's going to be nice to you and then the next thing he's not interested in going to eat you out. So yeah. Uh, we will also say that we have got in over 40 000 kronor now. So, bra kämpat och fortsätt donera. Vi fick ju som sagt in 125 000 förra året och vi tänker att uh, det ska vi slå. Ja. Så 40 000 är jättebra men ja. vi är inte klara. Nej, det är en god bit kvar. Ja, så det, det var en bra. Vi får ju inte glömma upp mana också ibland. Det, det finns ju faktiskt en anledning till att vi gör men det. Men vi är ändå typ, att det är typ en tredjedel i så fall. Ja. Nästan, nästan en tredjedel för att vara lika bra som förra året. But this is your first regional game at Torture. Yeah, um, we've got. Yeah, this is the first one. Uh, we we're actually working on two original games at the same time now, but this was this gets the you know, official title of our first one. Yeah. How did you end up at Torture Studios? If you're from Manchester. Uh, I'm. I'm actually from Liverpool. I, okay. I've, I've picked up a bit of a Manchester accent since that's where I worked most of my career. <laughs> um, Yeah, it was purely uh, by chance. It was one of my magnificent stumbles. I think I uh, found them on Wikipedia. I'm embarrassed to say because my wife wanted to go to university uh, back in Sweden, so uh, yeah. I knew we were moving to Malmo. And then uh, I didn't know what I was going to do because I was okay. a designer at TT Fusion at the time. Yeah. I thought, well, I don't know anywhere <laughs> in Malmo that I want to work, so I just looked up. Found a list of game developers in Ma in Malmo and Tarshi yeah. were on there. Um, right. It was, uh, without word of a lie, the minute I saw City of Metronome concept uh. art and read about that, right. I, I sent sent them a mail like straight away. Um, probably the first time I'd written as myself instead of as some applicant that you usually do. Um, and yeah, yeah, you can take different part different paths through the uh, through the level. Yeah, well. you can, and you can also close the oven door. Yeah. Which is a very exciting. Is it the child in there that uh, he's gonna cook and eat? No. <laughs> okay. Wow, your mind went somewhere dark. There. But I was just thinking oh. about the fairy tale stuff. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it does feel like the witch's kitchen. <laughs> yeah, you run. No. Okay. No. Until he can't breathe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was like a, a long conversation with uh, a guy called Peter Lubeck and yeah. then Matthias, our old CEO, talking to them for about six months and okay. then uh, yeah. All right. Got the job, and I've been uh, been there ever since. Obviously, because I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, you we quit a couple of years ago and just came. Yeah, in. yeah, yeah. <laughs> just to keep them on their toes. You don't know who you are. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think he thinks we're still paying him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think about the Swedish uh, game development scene? It uh, it's it's very cool. I think there's there's some very uh, cool people just in in Malmo alone. Yeah. You know, I mean you got the big ones like King and Massive. Yeah. Um, but you also got uh, smaller teams like Samogo, yeah. who are making really really interesting yeah. stuff. Uh, yeah. Year Walk and uh, what's the other the novel? Kind of text yeah. Uh, device six. Uh, device device six, six yeah. 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 Th there's some great, really cool little ideas. You know, yeah. kind of very creative. Yeah, exactly. It, it's, it inspires you that sort of stuff. So yeah, it, I think it's really nice. I think generally uh, Sweden supports yeah. game development really well. Yeah. We have a lot of guys here tomorrow that's from uh, Skövde. Okay. Right. So they they all and the, some of the guys who is on the game jam as well mm. are from there. So they they are all, all the they all went to the uh, uh, the school there. Uh, I wonder if that's where Ulla's from because I know he he either learned in Huerta or taught in Huerta. I should know his history. Yeah. Or I'll be fired when I go <laughs> yeah. back to work. <laughs> because they have the uh, college or university yeah, in Chukov yeah, yeah. that has the game mm. development uh, education, and that's yeah. the only uh, education on that level mm. that's uh, in Sweden. So there are a lot of uh, game developers mm. there, and that's a small town yeah, just yeah, in the yeah. middle of Sweden. So. So that's, why that's, that's why it's so buzzing though, like yeah. you've got people with a cool little huh? idea, yeah. you support yeah. them instead of saying yeah. no, 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 that's not commercial enough. Yeah. Really and they got the, they get the, <laughs> <laughs> they get the chance to, to test their uh, ideas and it's mm. working out pretty well for yeah. lots of them. Yeah. Like tomorrow we have this, um, the developers of Battlerite that have been uh, the number one seller on Steam for mm. quite a while. And they're just a couple of guys as well, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the devs. You know. I mean that's why that's where this came from as well. We yeah. we would not have been able to get this far if we hadn't had the support we got from Creative Europe and Nordic Game yeah. in the beginning. We we just didn't we couldn't afford to fund 
yeah. that prototype ourselves and you know and we're compared to these like you know one and two person uh, setups yeah. we were relatively big Nick. yeah but uh you know still it's uh, it's a huge deal yeah, it feels like it's uh, it's much uh, quite big support for uh, game development because it's viewed as like a f uh, future industry uh, and the game development uh, business in Sweden is pretty big if you compare, I think, uh, I read some kind of article that uh, Sweden is like fourth biggest game development country in the world yeah, or something right. like that. It's like Japan, America and uh, yeah. uh, Great Britain and then Sweden. So I mean, that, that's, how, that's how games are going to like hmm? get better and, you know, step out of that, that very safe commercial yeah. you know we can only put money into something that we know the majority of gamers are going to play you want to have that diversity that you get yeah. in the music industry and in, in the film industry you yeah. want the same and you know to be yeah really absolutely because if you just make the if you just make games for a certain kind of audience or just do something for the biggest audience yeah. then it's not you're never going to grow the audience no exactly the same audience are going to get the game same games that they always would play anyway, so no new yeah. people will come into the. Yeah, mm. yeah, it's it's really the, the only way forward, I think. But, uh, so it's nice to see that, that there are at least some some parts of the world that are supporting it. I don't know how it is in the UK. I, mean, I haven't been there for like a long time. It wasn't that good in no. compared to how it is in Sweden, but yeah, I don't know how it stands now. Probably on that. I think their minds uh, are on other things. This game, how has it uh, been received? Really good, I think. But yeah, mm. yeah. Um, it was it won the best as the best indie best game. Best indie, yeah. At Gamescom. How did that feel? Uh, well, amazing, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> I hated it. No. <laughs> it's too mainstream. <laughs> no, whatever. <laughs> Already ruined by this fame <laughs> thing. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, of course, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, I, uh, we actually talked to, uh, where were we? Uh, I was in uh, the Igramir game show in Moscow recently uh, and talking to the guys there on, on the Twitch stream and they were saying the same thing, you know, how's it feel, you know, it's, you know that people are reacting really well and, and they said, you know, because we, you know, we like it and I said, oh, thanks and it was a genuine, oh, thanks but he was like that, oh yeah, you're, like, you're surprised. <laughs> like, no, I actually am now, and it suddenly felt like false modesty. But it isn't, it's just, you know, because... You should be you smug. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. What, how do you want me to react to that? But it, it, it is because it, you never you never go into it anywhere thinking, yeah, we're the best, you know, everyone's going to love it, or you're a complete, uh, yeah. you know, not nice person. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's any kids watching <laughs> Um, so yeah, it, it's amazing. It, wh when we first released the teaser years ago, um, we just sat there and uh, drank a little bit of scotch, I think, and just <laughs> hoped and prayed. And then you just start to see people watching it and comments. And now, over the years, people people have actually had a chance to play it and uh, and they like it. And it's nice because we're not we're not uh, we lying it. about what we're doing. You know, we're not like. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be the most awesome. This, it's gonna be the, yeah. the whatever, like all of, all of that nonsense that you have to spout sometimes. We're just kind of trying to be honest about what yeah. we're doing and and give people a good idea of what they're gonna be playing. And it's, it's a still kind of working all right. Yeah, this is really. Disturbing. And this is what we want. You see, is like you pay attention to stuff like that. Yeah. Because they're really small. The things with your shoes. The little <laughs> face. <laughs> just like. Um, <laughs> Mother said that. I, I've also been, when I was 15, been to Auschwitz, and uh, um, they have a big room there in the museum at the site with all a big room with just the shoes. Mm. So, because uh, the the entire Holocaust you know, was, was a big meat grinder, mm. and it was, was like industrial yeah, right. level of mm. e uh, extermination of people. Mm. Mm. And as you said, you f uh, for you it this reminded you of a ball hub or uh, I know Star that makes Wars. me sound like such. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing <laughs> is, the the, the the first reference that I felt when we saw the shoes is that the meat, the and the team, the, the theme about the meat and stuff like that, and shoes is that mm. are they eating people or what's the ah, right. what is coming from? You know stuff? this thing keeps forming <laughs> shoes <laughs> from there. Yeah, but I mean, it it might just oh. be. Uh, 
people have lost shoes? You don't know. Um, That's no, the I point. Don't know. But, <laughs> but no. will we get an answer to all these you questions? W- you like won't, you won't we get, do. like, um, here's your exact story at the end. But you, we're not going to play coy either. It's just going to be, leave it up to you. Like, show yeah. you all this stuff. I mean, you are getting kind of like a, a certain picture right now. So as that picture gets bigger, your opinion of what's going on might change. So if you stand there for a really, really long time, Will the stacks of shoes build up and be f- will it fill <laughs> up with shoes or um, does the shoes in the bottom since layer you'll disappear? Never know, I will say yes, <laughs> definitely. No, uh, I don't think so. But let's uh, get the test team on that. <laughs> <laughs> See how many shoes the PS4 can handle before yeah, the memory gonna, you're, you're tops up. I think you're going to have a picture, but we want you to kind of paint your own picture, really. And I've uh, got a comment from the chat here that says, uh, even though it's a uh, horror <gasps> game. <laughs> you knew that was going to happen. No, but I didn't even really see it the last time. No. <laughs> yeah, even so though okay. it's a horror game with pretty gross uh, environments, it still looks kind of uh, music, I'll say about that, but Music? Cozy. Cozy. Cute. Yeah, cute. Yeah. yeah. I know that. Se- seem still seems kind of cozy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, that's I would I would say it's not a horror game anyway. Um, yeah. I mean, of course, there's so many subtle levels of horror and yeah. where you are in the world, but it's uh, yeah, it's n- it's not it's, it's not more horror, horror themed than a horror well, game, maybe. Just, yeah, well, we've called it a suspense adventure for a good reason, is because yeah. you're gonna be feeling scared and you're gonna see things that feel monstrous, but yeah. it's not just gonna be throwing giblets at you or yeah. you know just constant jump scares. Yeah. It's gonna be more about the build up attention and like expectation rather yeah. than just. Scare, 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 scare. You yeah. know, th- to me, that's what kind of classic uh, horror games are, at least. Yeah. But it depends on your your uh, interpretation of what horror is. I think. But your work with Media Molecule, a little big planet. Have mm. you learned anything valuable there that you have nah. brought in? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Of course you do. Of yeah. course you do, um, because they're extremely good at what they do, um, and they continue to be as well. But you know, to create this. The Little Big Planet franchise from just this kind of glint in the eye and, and what it became, just bringing so many people together to be really creative. Um, and lo- a lot of people that work with us now um, came from the community. Some yeah. of them have left, but you know, that again, that, that really changed things yeah. for, the, for get how you get in the games industry. Uh, I got in through my brother, he got me some work experience, but whereas now people spend their free time excelling at something and then you know media molecule themselves were kind of hiring people who were who were proving how how great they were at this stuff to work with them and stuff so um yeah, yeah we you know <coughs> excuse me i should have had chewing gum um <laughs> uh yeah so you you do you kind of when you're just even in the, the kind of area of people like that these super creative people like like media molecule are then yeah you can't help but just you try and absorb as much as you yeah. can from them i remember when the little bit p- little big planet 2 were released and the you know the engine or the editor where we can build stuff like mm. in the in the game people actually built like entire new games yeah, yeah. not just platforming games but the uh, side scrolling shooters and yeah. rpgs and sh- uh, first some i think some people got made first person shooters like stuff not real, but like uh, like arcade shooters and stuff like yeah, that. It was really, like really crazy, crazy and everyone did it with the PS3 controller and just the menus and stuff like that. Yeah. So I can really imagine some of the guys that made, or girls that made the, the little bit plant levels or the, the new games that mm. were created have really huge potential if they get their hands on actual real tools that yeah. are much more flexible and powerful and can do really amazing yeah, things. Yeah, exactly, that. yeah. That's it. I think uh it's been it's <laughs> amazing to me like when you see people who have just kind of been working with this uh the the LBP editor and then they like to get their hands on Unreal and it's just kind of shifting yeah like how all right, that worked like this on it. All right, so I get it and and they just transfer those skills to something yeah. which can do even more, yeah. you know, for them, and uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I'm in awe of people that can do that because I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I write the words. Yeah. <laughs> you can learn. Yeah, I tried. <laughs> it was a non-starter. <laughs> <laughs> Should we transition to uh, the next segment of yeah. our? Yeah. Uh, Should I shuffle awkwardly out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you should. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh, really nice getting uh, getting to play Little Nightmares, and I really look forward to the yeah when is it released? Yeah. of the game. Yeah, you yeah. got through it twice as well. Which yeah, is quite yeah, awesome. I know how it works <laughs> now. I'll be an expert. When, but when does it uh, get released? Uh, in in sp- spring. In spring. We say it together. Okay. Yeah. In two thousand. It's no no date. No, so yes, yeah. no okay. official date yeah. yet. Okay, okay. On what uh, platforms? PS4. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, use it. I like using Xbox it. One and PC. Okay. Right. Yeah. Great. Great. Thanks for coming from Malmö. Thank you. Yeah. I'm yeah, going thank to go you very much. Yeah. Right <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. So now we continue with Namco. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. It was yeah. really great. Yeah. To yeah. Nice to talk to you. Yeah. Cheers. Thank thanks. you. <laughs>